Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to find undervalued stocks. Uh, this is a process that I use uh, often, and I use this process to, to figure out, you know, what, which stocks are a good price and, and which stocks are overvalued. So so to begin, uh, we'll start using by using our Fidelity Roth IRA account. You can also use the individual brokerage account. And I went ahead and clicked on Use and Research, and I clicked on Stocks, and I'm taken to this page, Stock Research Center. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to we figure out what industry we want to invest in. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Industrials. And I want to click Find Investments. And I'm going to click Stocks, re re View All Results. And I should get a list of all the different companies within the industry. And basically what I want to do is I want to download this data set so I can export to Excel. So I'm going to hit download results and it's going to go uh, and I'm going to click valuation, growth and ownership. All right, now that we have our data set, uh, we're just going to do some cleaning up of the Excel sheet here. We're going to hide these columns. Uh, we're going to create a filter and because we're going to do some filtering. And now what I want to do is I want to basically sort my P ratios. Uh, and the reason why we're looking at P ratios is we're going to figure out, you know, what is the average P ratio of this industry? And we basically want to find, you know, P ratios with good uh, pay ratios. And I'll explain pay ratios in a bit. So once once we do this, uh, we'll sort that. And we're going to de delete all of the stocks where we don't have P ratios because it's really hard to determine you know, how they're priced if the company is generating negative earnings. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay, so now that we have our P ratio, the next step we want to do is we want to figure out what is the average uh, P ratio in this industry, and, which is 56 times. And we also want to figure out what is the average pig ratio. So we're just going to make a little side note here. This is the average. So we have average P ratio of 56 and an average pig ratio of 4.2. Um, so, so really when I'm looking for undervalued stocks, uh, I'm not necessarily have a specific P ratio in mind uh, because a company can have a high P ratio and but have a really good pig ratio and, and it, it can still be considered a, a really good valuable stock. So I don't want to... I don't want to uh, cheat myself out of good stocks just by simply always trying to pursue stocks with low P ratios. So, um, but what I am looking for is companies with with peg ratios that are closest to one, and, and the reason for that is because that tells me that the company's earnings uh, per share is growing at the same rate as as what this company is priced at. Um, so, if a company has a super high P ratio of let's say two hundred but has a pay ratio of one, that means that the company is growing uh, at the same rate as what this company is currently priced at. So that can be a, a, a valuable stock. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly go through this list and I'm gonna assort my pay ratios here from the smallest to largest. Uh, and what I'm really looking for is, is pay ratios within the one per one mark. Now, uh, sometimes there are special occasions, special scenarios where I come across a stock with a pay ratio of, of less than one, uh, and, and that's also interesting. But I, I, I need to understand why it's less than one. And so, uh, let's take this stock for example, Alice Corp. Um, and you know they have a below average P ratio and they have a pay ratio of, of 0 0.1. So I really want to find out, you know, what's going on with this company. It could be an interesting pick. So we're just going to copy the ticker and so, and enter it into your fidelity. And we're going to hit search. Okay, so we have Atlas Corporation. Looks like they're uh, looks like this may be a Canada company. It's a, it's an industrial small cap stock with a market capitalization of two point seven billion dollars. Um, okay, so what we want to look at here is we can look at earnings per share and we saw that this company has a 12 12 point2 price to earnings ratio um, compared to the industry average of 98 P ratio and it has a, a pay ratio of, of less than one compared to the industry of 3.2 uh, so that's that's a good sign for me uh, when I'm looking at stocks 
so so far so good. Uh, but I'm really trying to understand why this p peg ratio is less than one. It could be a good a, a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Um, okay, so just fundamental, quick fundamental analysis. I mean, it's it looks like it's fairly priced, uh, good amount of growth, and good uh, financial standing. So I want to look at key key statistics, and here we're going to be able to get a good sense of of where this company stands uh, compared to the mark compared to the industry. Um, so it's in the marine uh, industry or sub industry. Um, you know, I'm not a, uh, I'm not too well informed on the marine industry, so you know it has to be an industry that I'm comfortable with, and, and you know this this I, I might not have the, the adequate knowledge to, to feel comfortable investing in this company because I, I just don't know enough about marine uh, the the marine industry. So, but you know, let's take a look regardless. Uh, you know, we got a good pay uh, ratio of 7.1. Oh, that's a five-year projection. Uh, we got a good price-to-earnings ratio compared to the industry. Uh, the forward, the forward earnings per share long-term growth rate is 16%, uh, compared to the industry of 9.3%. And the last revenue growth, the last five years, has been 9%. So it's been slightly better than the industry average, so that's a good sign. Um, here's a sort of a red flag. You know, there's a negative... Cat, free cash flow trailing 12 months of negative uh, 355 million uh, compared to the industry average. So that's a red flag because that tells me that this company is, is running on uh, negative cash flows and um, that could be a, a red flag. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at profit margins and we'll see that there's 22% um, profit margins, outstanding margins compared to the industry average the last 12 months. Uh, pretty good returns compared to the industry average and we have a current ratio of 0.57 so this is an, another red flag for me uh, typically when you have a current ratio that's less than one um, that that could be a red flag because that that indicates that the company may have um, may, may not have enough liquidity cash or or, or short-term assets to be able to cover their their short-term liabilities um, so that's a red flag for me so so far I don't think I'm, I'm really in favor of this company I'm also looking at the debt and they have higher debt than, than the industry average um, so this may be a company that that might not be a good choice but let's let's say let's see what what the um, industry experts say about this company you can usually find a some sort of research report and uh, Zax is a pretty good source. Let's see what they have to say. And I'm basically just going to see what their recommendations are. Uh, looks like they don't have much information on this company as they only have one one page of, of research. Um, so, yeah, that, and, and that's a perfect example of sometimes you have companies with, with uh, pay ratios that are less than one that could be good choices, but sometimes they're bad choices. And I, I think right now that there's not... You know, uh, Zach's rated them as a hold, uh, but based on their balance sheet and, and their liquid assets, I, I don't think this is a company I feel comfortable investing. Um, so let's keep searching. You, we, we're going to search this. Uh, let's see, we have a, a 1 and an 18p ratio. We're going to search mass, see what they're all about. And hopefully we can find a, a, a good valuable stock here. Um, so I'll run the same process. Infidelity, and we got. Let's see. We have Mass Masco Corporation. This is a middle middle sized company, 14, uh, 14 point billion dollar market capitalization. Uh, let's look at the earnings per per growth ratio. Um, eighteen p ratio compared to industry average of forty eight. One peg ratio of forty seven. So so far so good. This company is looking um, pretty good so far. And let's see what they're doing here. So they are in the buildings products industry. And let's go over to uh, market. So interesting here is there's some overvaluation going on here. So let's try and figure out what where that's coming from. All right, we have a P ratio of 18% compared 18 times compared to 38. We have a pay ratio of one, which is really good in my opinion. Uh, okay, so recent growth, the last five years, 
it's negative four percent compared to industry average so that's a red flag for me i usually like to see continuous sales growth especially the last five years which is very recent uh, however they have they do have a positive outlook in earnings earnings per share long-term growth rate of 18 percent within the next three to five years so that could be a positive sign uh really good profit margins um, negative uh, return on equity. So there's something going on with the stock that maybe we need to look more into. Uh, higher debts than industry average. Um, more than more than enough liquidity to meet short-term obligations. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this company. Maybe they're just having a bad year. Uh, but based on their sales, um, you know, I, I typically like to invest in companies that have continuous sales growth in, and usually. Uh, you know, there's some, there may be some issues with management on, on their ability to, to continue sales growth or innovating new products or services out in the market. Um, so, you know, obviously there's a bullish outlook on this company, as you see there. Um, but I'm really trying to understand this overvaluation here, uh, and and a way that I can do that is again go back to the research reports and find out what they're saying. Um, I like to use Zacks, so I'll click on Zacks. Okay, here we have some more information. So they rated this as a, as a buy, and they think that this, this company will outperform uh, this company, and and they may have some reasons as to why. So it looks like their leading brand portfolio, improving housing market, strong balance sheet, and enough enough liquidity. Uh, they they're doing acquisitions to investors and accelerate growth, and cost savings initiatives. Okay, um, and then they have the potential risk are they have some cost pressures in the construction industry due to the commodity prices, uh, and they're dealing with federal government actions as well. All right, so in terms of valuation, um, it looks like they think that this stock will outperform the industry, and I, I'm really just trying to understand the over the overvaluation, and, and it could be that you know they're. Uh, enterprise value divided by EBITDA is 11 times the industry average. So I'm not fully understanding um, the overvaluation here. I actually think this company could be good value. The only thing I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of concerned about is the uh, recent return on equity. And that might be something to look into for this stock. Uh, but again... Um, we, we really need to understand, you know, wh why their return on equity is, is negative and, and potentially uh, it could just be like the, the industry is having a bad year due to the coronavirus. But uh, most of these metrics seem pretty good. The debt is a little uh, high for my uh, taste. I, I like to invest in companies that are less than, four, than at least or less than 40 percent uh, debt to asset ratio. Um, so, so again, not not the the right pick yet, but I'm sure we can uh, find something uh, the more we look uh, through these stocks. So, so that's the typical process uh, we're looking for. Let's run one more and see if we can find one better option. Let's try this Apogo, and then uh, if we don't find anything there, then what we can you know call it a day for now. But um, again, just kind of tr trying to show you guys just my thought process as I'm looking through these stocks. Uh, we'll do a really quick review on this one. Small cap stock, very good. Let's go straight to the to the. Um, so here we have a company that's undervalued. Um, slightly less growth, but very good financial health. So this might be a better pick, just uh, in general. All right, we have a P ratio less than industry average. They're also in the building and products. Uh, industry, they have a really good peg ratio, um, really good price to sales ratio, and and basically what this means is you're you're having to pay a less price for the amount of sales. And it, if you see the industry average, you're paying twice as much for the for the same amount of sales, um, in, in terms of you know percentages or ratios. Okay, so let's see here. We have a forward earnings per share growth long term, uh, fifteen percent. Uh, twice as much as the industry average, and we have constant revenue growth the last five years of eight percent compared to the industry average two percent. So really good. This is a really strong indicator. Is you want constant growth sales uh, throughout the last five years. You have a good amount of free cash flow coming in the business with one point with one thirty one million dollars of free cash flow. Slightly less than industry average, but I think that's okay. Um, Pre-tax operating margins, less profitable margins than the industry average. 
Um, and let's see, we have here return on equity 9% compared to industry average of negative 30%. That's a, that's a really good sign. And then also in terms of debt, this company is, has less debt, 24% compared to the industry average, 35%. And they have plenty of uh, liquid, liquid assets to be able to meet their short-term financial obligations. So so this seems like a safer pick compared to, to Masco. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the risk, the more risk you take, obviously the, the more return you, you should uh, demand. But for, you know, Picking good stocks with good growth and safe bets, I think this is a company that will do well. Uh, so to wrap up this video, let's just look at the final analyst um, opinion here. Uh, we'll go to research reports. Uh, let's go to Zacks and let's see what they have to say. So they've rated this as a hold, but uh, but they also think this stock will outperform. Um, I personally think this is a pretty good pick, and it's definitely worth uh, more research or more more looking into this company. Uh, okay, so some of their uh, reasons to buy, you know, their, their strong backlog, architectural segments, increase improving efficiency, productivity and operations, roll out of new products, and all as well as cost reduction initiatives. Uh, seems like that's a, a, a constant effort in the building product industry. Uh, you can read through some of the, the, the risk, and obviously there's some corona pandemic related issues going on with this industry. Um, but I really want to see the valuation and see what their final recommendation is. Uh, so our outperform recommendation indicates the stock will outperform better than the market. Um, so that's a good indicator. Again, really good uh, price to earnings ratio, uh, really good enterprise value divided by a beta ratio. Um, so I think this is actually a solid pick. I'm actually going to do more research on this company. Um, so I hope that was helpful. You know, that's this is the process that I run through to figure out what are good stocks which are which are bad stocks um, and but really to, to recap all of this I'm really looking for companies that uh, are have a, a good P ratio a really strong you know peg ratio of one and I'm looking for stocks with with consistent sales growth the last five years uh, I'm looking for a positive outlook and earnings per share growth rate I'm looking for companies with with you know debt to asset ratio of no more than 40 percent now if they do have more than 40 percent then um i, I just want to make sure that they have enough free cash flow coming in and i also want to make sure that they have enough uh, liquid assets to be able to meet their short-term obligations and that's going to be uh, gauged uh, determined on their current ratio so typically you want a current ratio of one sometimes you know if they're if they have higher debt you might want a little bit of a buffer there and have a uh, slightly above one current ratio uh, just so you get comfortable with with the amount of debt. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments down below. I appreciate it if you like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I look forward to speaking with you in the next video. Thank you.